Hello you, it's Josh here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be doing something a little bit different because today I'll be showing you 10 very easy build hacks right here in Theme Park Tycoon 2. Mostly coaster related for today's video, although if you do enjoy this video, leave a like and I will do more of these sort of videos in the future with stuff like terrain, trees, scenery, buildings, fences, anything like that. Anything you can think of, comment it down below and I'll make sure to do one of them right here if you guys enjoy this video. Although one thing that I will point out is that if you move your mouse down to the bottom of the video right here, it'll come up with the little bar at the bottom and you can see that this video is split into different sections. Now, if you don't like a section or you don't think you're going to use it, then you can always skip forward to the next section. Or if you want to come back to come see how you I did a certain one because you need it for something then don't worry you don't have to watch through the entire video you can just skip to that part by navigating through the little bar at the bottom so here's the 10 build hacks that i'm going to be showing you today to start off with we have a very realistic looking switch track right here although this doesn't work it is a very very nice looking drop track right here i'll be showing you this switch track which is a little bit different i'll explain a little bit more what the difference is when we'll get into them two different very lovely designs right here for some drive tires these lovely custom brakes right here here. A nice simple storage shed to keep your roller coaster trains when they're not being used. And finally, for our last three right here, I'll be showing you how to do custom supports and a catwalk for these three types of roller coaster right here an inverted coaster, a normal coaster, and a two tile wide coaster right here. So, I mean, if you want to actually learn how to build these right here, stick around and I'm going to be showing you how to build each one of these here one at a time. Now, starting off with our switch track right here. Now, this one's actually kind of a little bit of a difficult one. So, if you're not too too good at the game I recommend maybe skipping this one or I'll also show you how to simplify it down a bit but what we're basically going to do right here guys and then just place a piece of track like that and then we're going to just place a nice chicane a long chicane actually going like so and then an extra piece right here now that will mean that basically it kind of looks like it's going through right here. Now, obviously, in real life, this will be going off to maybe a station here and a station here or something like that. But this obviously doesn't work, but it still looks really, really nice. It's a nice detail to your uh, park right here. But for your other roller coaster right here, you basically want to do the exact same, except from you can see for this end part right here, we've used Advanced Editor. Now, there's no perfect way to do this, really. Although, what I recommend doing is rotating this right here uh, until, you know, basically just rotating it with this until it kind of looks all right and then dragging it out until it kind of looks all right although the best thing to do is really just do it kind of free form right here although because obviously every single one of these switch tracks they'll look different some more you, you know you may want these to be further away you may, you may want them to be closer for some reason you know it, that's all up to you but um, basically you can see right here that we've got our track right here and then we've got our rails that go over. Now you can place this track in right here by literally just placing another flawless coaster maybe here and then just connecting that into this flawless coaster like so. And then again, just kind of sort out the angle as best as you can right here. Now, as you can see, this is uh, no way, uh, no way smooth. I mean, in real life, they would have a straight line cut through here because obviously it would slide in, but it's kind of impossible to do that in, in the game. But you can see that this kind of works anyway. And then for this last bit right here, you can see that we've got our rails, which we're just doing by having some poles right here, just on the ground. And then I've rotated some of these poles right here so that they're like this. And then you can see we just connect those up like so, running from side to side. Keep in mind that this back pole right here needs to be a little bit longer because, for example, if you actually in real life uh, move this across, this wheel right here is more to the right than this wheel. So this needs to be longer here for it to slide over and for this to slide over. Now, again, Again, it depends on how wide you want this to be right here if you want to make it wider make your rail bigger right here because obviously you want to be able to make it so that your uh, roller coaster track here can move out of the way and this one can come into place and now for the wheel mechanism this one's a little bit of a difficult one right here but I'm basically using some of these little a uh, little primitive cylinders right here just two on top of each other which connect into one of these primitive cube oil, uh, balls right here and then you've got two little circles right here with these little cylinders 
which kind of connects in through the track, which doesn't make much sense, but, you know, it kind of works. You can always put them on top of the track if you want, but for simplicity's sake, I've just left it like this. And then you just need to do that to every single one of your pieces of track here. Obviously, you don't want to put it on this part here. Um, and then you've got a nice moving system right here. Now, the other thing that I did also do is I added some primitives right here, just these cylinders right here, just to act as supports right here. Although, obviously, do what supports you want. I should probably mention that if you've got an inverted coaster right here, then you may obviously want to do this the other way around, of course, uh, by basically just having the rails on the top, the wheels on the top, stuff like that, and then just have the, uh, you know, obviously the coaster track going like that. Now, I, I know this is quite difficult, uh, and I don't want this video to be going on forever right here, so I'm not going to be recreating each build. I'm just going to be showing you how I built them right here. But I guess if you do want a tutorial on any of these right here, do put it down in the description, and I will do a full-on tutorial where I, I show you bit by bit how you actually build these. But moving on, we have our fake drop track right here, which is actually one of my favorites right here. I really like how this turned out right here. Now, obviously, this is a very... Very, very bare bones drop track here. In real life, they would normally have walls around here that have some decoration, all that sort of stuff. But I just wanted to show you how to actually build the ride mechanism, as you can see, like so. So that if you wanted to actually build a drop track right here that's just playing for some reason, uh, then you can right here and then you can add stuff to it if you want. But basically, the way that we've done this is, as you can probably guess right here, we're, we're using the flawless coaster again, by the way. Uh, I've just placed it in like that, just placed a bit of track right there, and then I've started a new coaster up here, placed that station in, and just placed a bit of track all, uh, all the way along here. Now, obviously, in the game, what I uh, the only way to really make this work right here is with video editing, but it is definitely possible, and maybe one day Dennis will actually add proper drop tracks into the game. We can only hope. But uh, for now, this is the best we can do right here, and we can just make it seem like it's an actual drop track right here. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, we've got our track in like that, and then we just got our cylinders in like so, which connect into the bottom of the track, similar to how we did it in this last one here. And then they connect into these beams right here, which then go all the way across, which just kind of rest halfway through here. You can see these rest halfway through these pipes right here, which kind of just run all the way along here and all the way along here against these concrete pillars right here. I recommend at least having three of these if you're going to keep it bare bones, because obviously uh, a drop jack's quite, uh, you know, it's quite uh, heavy and stuff like that. It's got to support an entire train and all that sort of stuff. I just added these simple little primitive poles in like here to maybe add a bit of brakes or stuff like like this. Now, this isn't the most realistic drop track ever. I mean, if you really want to make this realistic, uh, I'm pretty sure they work on pistons or wheels or something like that. I have absolutely no clue. But, I mean, if you know how actual proper drop tracks work, then this video is probably not for you because these are more basic uh, <laughs> build hacks anyway. But, you know, I mean... Uh, this is a nice way to make it look good uh, while keeping it pretty simple. Keeping on the theme of our switch tracks right here, we've got another switch track right here. Now, I said at the start I would explain why these two are different, and that's because this one would normally go into a storage shed, which I will show you in just a second right here. But normally, this would slide across. You put the train on it, and it would slide across, and it would go backwards into, like, a storage shed like this. Now, this is normally because they'd like to store the trains during winter or something like that, because obviously during winter, you, uh, you know, the trains may not be running or anything like that uh, especially if you're in Europe or something like that so uh, basically yeah it, it, it obviously needs to be way longer than this unless you've got a short train but for this example right here I've only I made it this long right here but as you can see similar to this one over here we've got our flawless coaster which I've been using for all of these basically just as an example but we've got that going across right here we've got two pillars either side using our primitives and then we've got our other piece of track over here using a separate coaster right here with our lovely lovely little poles right here and then these now have some mini little poles like this as you can see right here sticking into our track like that which sticks into a bar with four little wheels going all the way across like so and then they're just resting on a nice beam which is going all the way across with some beams sticking up like that now like i said i make this a lot longer right here it depends on how long your train is for example if your train is seven long then it should be seven track pieces long if your train is only one long then you can get away 
away with maybe having it one or two long. What I would say is maybe as a good rule of thumb, always have your uh, switch track right here, one longer than the actual train because it just makes it a little bit more realistic. Although obviously sometimes you have space constraints, so you can compromise in some places. Speaking of switch tracks though, you can see right here that we've got a lovely storage shed right here. Now this is useful, like I said, to have on the edge of the one of these right here. You could have the track go over a little bit and then have one of these storage sheds or something like that. Now in uh, places like Happening Point, which is my building series, I have storage sheds similar to these right here. But basically these are very, very simple. I'm not really gonna go through much of this right here because basically all they are right here is some lovely primitive walls like, like so, just stacked up around each other like so. And then for this doorway, I've just used the smaller ones to go around and then obviously you can see that we've used some of these nice triangle pieces right here along with these uh, roofs right like so and it all just connects in like that. I've also added a bit of flooring like that and also some nice supports coming in like here with just these cylinders although obviously they're not really needed. Uh, to be honest, this one you can customize a lot because this is a very, very basic storage shed. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you want something basic that gets the job done and you're not too great at building, then I mean, this is quite a good answer. Moving on, it's time to do some coaster wheels right here or some tires or whatever you want to call, uh, call them right here. Now, we've got two different designs, but I'm going to start with this one right here. Now, it completely depends on which one you want to use right here. Uh, like, basically, it, it really does depend on, like, you know, what coaster you use right here uh, to, uh, to to see if it'll actually work or not because, you know, some coasters will work better with these tires, some coasters will work better with these tires. You see that I'm using the hyper coaster right here because it has this nice fixed spline without me having to add anything else on right here. So you can see that it just automatically kind of fits in like that, although obviously feel free to use any ride you want right here. Now this one's very simple, all we're going to do is just put like as many pieces of track we want and then on top of that track, we're just going to get one of these little wheels, we're going to color it this black right here uh this fabric right here and we're literally just gonna sink it into the track like so so we're just gonna lower it down until it's about halfway in like that and then there you go you've got some drive tires now you can see that i've placed these i think every if we go to default stopping yes every two you place them every one if you want although i say every two it's probably a good amount and this is fairly realistic obviously and then of course you have our other uh, wheels right here which has our nice poles like so so coming up and all that sort of stuff like supports and then we have the same sort of thing right here with the same black color and whatever uh, and then we just place them in like so making sure that they're nice and together you can do this by just going onto a half snapping like so and that'll just connect them all together and then again i place them about two away from each other on default snapping like so although of course feel free to do whatever you want now if you are wondering what coasters would work better with which like i said before it's a little bit hard to tell honestly but I would say for your thinner tracks, probably use these uh, chains and for your bigger tracks, maybe use these. That's just a general rule of thumb, just because these are thinner, whereas these are much thicker. And you can see even on this hypercoaster track, which is quite wide, as you can see from this silhouette right here, compared to some other tracks, it, it still it only just fits in. But honestly, that's completely up to you. You decide what you want to do with that. If you know a little bit more about coasters, you'll obviously know which, tra which tracks need which wheels, and you can do so. And now we're on to custom brakes right here. Now, this is actually something that I really like how it turned out, because honestly, it's very, very simple here, and I quite like it, honestly. Now, obviously, there are normal brakes in the game, but some of the brakes in the game are a little bit meh. So, you can actually make your own custom uh, brakes here. Obviously, you may want to actually overlay these with your own brakes, and as you can see right here, I haven't actually done that uh, and you can see it still doesn't look bad though even when you do add the brakes uh, although it is nice to even just add your own brakes maybe it's some trim brakes or something like that uh, this can also kind of work for an LSM launch or an LIM launch um, because it kind of looks like the magnets although you may want to change the colors a little bit and stuff like that but you can see right here basically guys the way that this works right here is we just have two little primitives oh, sorry not two little primitives a bunch of little primitives like so uh, and you can see we've just got those all next to each other going all along like so I basically place these like this you can see experiment around you'll work it out it's a little hard to get right but you will get it eventually the other way that you can do it right here is you can use a roof trim and just rotate this around and place it in like so the only reason why i haven't done that here is just because 
uh, they are a little bit longer so it's harder to get those gaps in between while keeping everything even because then it will all keep the same and they're also a little bit thinner uh, as well you can see right here then our things actually no they are the same size they're just a bit longer so if you are running into maximum amount of like items here then definitely use your roof trims like so but honestly it looks much better with these poles if you're willing to go the extra length to make it a little bit more detailed now we've got our last three right here our three different types of catwalks here now we're going to start off with our default catwalk again we're going to be using our flawless coaster although obviously use whatever coaster you want as long as it is one tile wide uh although it can also technically work on two tiles with this but this is what this is mainly for one tile uh so get a coaster that is one tower wide and not inverted like so and you can see right here basically the way that we've done this here is we've just placed some nice primitives like so running all the way along like this and then underneath we've got some poles which then connect that into our supports which you can see our custom supports right here and then I've also run some of these thinner poles that come along right here to kind of support it a bit more and obviously build a bit of a fence along like this um, now you can see that it's pretty pretty basic uh, but it works pretty it works pretty well and I quite like it the only problem that you may face is going around corners if you're going around a corner I recommend either getting rid of the catwalk or you can obviously try to build a corner catwalk it's definitely not impossible it's just a little bit harder so maybe if you're not as good as the game maybe just not have a catwalk on the corners and if you are wondering as well what a catwalk is for it's so if the ride breaks down for example on a block breaks or a breaks or something like that then people can easily come off of the ride you'll see them in many different rides I might put some references up on the screen right now you'll see them in many different rides and it just adds that extra bit of realism just because it means that if the ride did break down even though it doesn't but if it did break down people could still get off of the ride and they'd still be fine anyway now we know that we're now going to get onto our inverted catwalk right here now you can see that this one is uh, a little little more difficult than the last one now it's very over the top in, in some cases and you can definitely do this simpler but you can see right here basically we have our inverted coaster I've used the four seats across one right here and then I've done these supports right here which if you want to know a little bit more about, about the supports I'll do another video on them I'll do a video on uh, another video on roller coasters or whatever you know if this video reaches like a, a pretty good amount of likes I guess I, I don't know uh, <laughs> but yeah I, you can see we've got these supports going up right here and then obviously we've got our catwalk once again connected to our support by these fences just going along right here the way that I've actually done these supports means that it kind of already connects in so I don't have bars going underneath although you can do that and then we've just got our catwalks going along like so using our primitives and obviously our fences using our poles right here and then we've got the exact same on the other side seeing as this is obviously a two tile wide ride right here yeah, you can maybe just do it on one side if it's only a one tile uh, if it's only like a uh, one tile ride a wide ride but that's completely up to you honestly and then on top of that I've also added some ladders in right here um which basically yeah I've just got some ladders uh, ladders recolored them and rotated them around 90 degrees so that they go like this I've also added some bars on the edge right here using these uh, cuboids right here just so it kind of ends them off. Although obviously, uh, you only need to do that at the actual end of your catwalk right here. So you can see, I mean, it works pretty well and I quite like it honestly. And for a inverted coaster, this is fairly realistic to have this sort of grill system. Although I would say maybe going up the actual chain lift, in some cases they'll probably just have it going down over the, side, over the sides right here or something like that instead of all this like you know thingy right here i should also probably point out that if you are going up a hill as well you may want to turn these into steps now you can just have this be a slope but i would say anything above maybe 45 degrees is probably a little bit too much uh, for it to be a slope so at about 45 degrees or maybe even less 33 points uh, 75 I think it is or something like that whatever the amount you want you can start uh, creating steps by literally just going up like this just uh, setting it to a quarter and moving it across like that and you can see then I start to make some stairs like so 
Uh, and it's, I mean, it works pretty well. Obviously, it needs to actually fit the curve of the ride, but you get the point. Now, finally, we have our double wide track right here. Now, this is actually very similar to our original one right here, but the main difference is, is that this one is much wider because, of course, this is using a two-tile one right here. So, this is for all two-tile rides like the Hypercoaster, for example. So, I've just placed in my Hypercoaster, put my nice supports on, and then you can see that I've placed the primitives going all the way along, just like I did in the first one which connects up to our bars going all the way along right here. You can see that I put them approximately one away. You can see if we go to like the middle, it's about like two from there. Uh, and you can see that just goes all the way along. And then we have our nice fence just using this pole like so again like that. And then of course, I've duplicated that onto the other side. Now, just like this one right here, you don't really need this on both sides right here. Although I think it does look a little bit better. And for your wider rides, I mean, why? Why not have them on both sides hey because you're you know it's four seats across rather than just two seats across so why not have double the amount of catwalks hey hey i mean you know <laughs> you might as well but it completely depends on what you want what space you have and what works best i guess but guys for today that is everything like i said at the start of this video if you do want to see more of these videos right here as you can see i have plenty plenty more designs not just for roller coasters but for scenery for buildings and so much more right here so if you you do want to see another one of these videos click the like button and obviously subscribe if you want to see more of these i do tutorials all the times via videos like that i'm a theme park tiger 2 youtuber so if you enjoy theme park tiger 2 make sure to subscribe but except from that make sure to check all the links down below as well there's plenty of stuff here's all the lovely patrons and stuff like that on the screen is wow wow look look, look how look how lovely they are and also the twitch subscribers channel members and all that sort of stuff thank you all so much if you became any of those you can become all those all the links for that is down below and except from that guys i hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you all in another one goodbye